Introduction here. I'm sure many of you don't need an introduction to Dusty, but uh, good evening. My name is Eric Baden. I'm the chair of the art department, and on behalf of the art department, uh, the, the students, the crew, the faculty, the support staff, past and present, welcome to the Holden Gallery. Um, and it's my pleasure to welcome you, and, and truly an honor to uh, introduce Dusty Benedict tonight. Yeah. Um, <laughs> also, we're, we're honored this evening to have Betty Holden in the audience. Yes, Here's yes. Betty. This, this gallery is named for Betty. And uh, the building is named for Betty and her husband, Ben, who, is a, who was a former president of Warren Wilson College. Um, Dusty and Betty are uh, old friends, and they've played essential roles. He illustrated that locus by citing surfing, the right <laughs> amount of control and the right amount of surrender. After that, I heard the art critic and historian Dave Hickey echo a similar point when he described in an art theory class surfing as the embodiment of cool, because you can't think and do it at the same time. <laughs> Dusty brings that cool, that agility, sensitivity, and balance to his painting and to his teaching. Uh, well, um, I guess I'd like to start <clears throat> by saying, uh, as a retrospective show, it means going back and going through work and seeing connections. And uh, there was quite a bit of work. And as I started going through things, I started to realize there were kind of three very, very strong influences that uh, were kind of ran consistently through my work. Uh, one of them uh, was the human figure uh, in, in drawings. And I started to try and work in a way. And this, this piece here, uh, which is basically a stick, uh, a number of people have said that it uh, reminds them of the figure. Most of so the world that we see is because of value or a range of light and dark. Not color. If you really squint your eyes and you look around, uh, the world is, is, we see things primarily because of, of light and dark. Uh, and this has been confirmed scientifically too. Uh, and it's like black and white photography. I love, uh, I love just black and white. There's, there's something about it that uh, I think is, is, is pretty powerful. And I think it's because that's generally how we see the world. As, as an underlying structure, other than just uh, an interesting image. And it kind of introduced me to the idea of kind of the spirit of things, the essence of things behind what we see. So more about how things feel and that kind of mystical world that you can't see but we, most of us acknowledge that there's something more than just the physical world. So that was a very instrumental painting by itself. And I drew every single leaf on that tree as an individual leaf. And it really was the lesson for me that there are no shortcuts. <laughs> uh, and it got it got closer to that idea of authenticity and uh, genuineness and, and just the patience that it takes uh, to, to get there, <laughs> wherever that is. Uh, 19, 1989, 
And I had an opportunity to study with a New York painter, Robert Natkin, down at the Atlantic Center for the Arts for two weeks. And it was quite an experience because it just, uh, to be in the company of, of someone like that uh, and the situation we were in, we just, we painted, we took one day off and we'd paint eight, 10, 12 hours a day, sometimes just, just working. And it just really turned my world upside down to, to uh, what he encouraged us to do. Uh, and I th think I did probably 15 uh, three by four foot canvases in that period of time. A whole bunch of color studies and, and drawings as well. And it just, it just changed everything. Uh, we lived down at Topsail Beach uh, for a year. And I spent a lot of time uh, just out in the marshes and um, drawing, doing uh, sketches and so forth. And then uh, developing this whole series of paintings in uh, in not knowing. <laughs> and of course, if you want to know, you have to start with not knowing. Um, so that it allowed me the freedom to really just do, do anything to get started. And I started thinking of it almost like archaeology. And just putting down some history and, uh, and, and building that up and uh, usually simplifying uh, things and and discovering things and that that was the thing that I became really interested in is discovering possibilities that I couldn't even imagine uh, if I thought of it ahead of time so that way of, of painting is, is really what has continued uh, continued on uh, the, the quote that I had on, uh, on my card by Arthur Dove, I don't know if I can do it uh, exactly, but uh, in, in that he said, we seem to set down a self-portrait of our innermost feelings with everything we do, and how much finer to have the means of expression in harmony with those feelings. Mm -hmm. um, and that's that's kind of stuck with me. And that's probably why, uh, if, if you look at this as a whole, it looks like three or four different people. Mm -hmm. uh, different experiences, uh, in my mind, necessitated and required different means of expression. Uh, different materials, different, what I refer to as pictorial forms, some things more representational, some things more abstract. Uh, so, so you really don't see any kind of stylistic growth. Um, and I really don't even like the word style because it seems to me that it's pretty superficial. And that each of us are unique. And if you kind of tap that uniqueness, whatever you do, uh, that's what most people call style. So it's a byproduct, I think, of working. And you can't not be yourself. <laughs> uh, so a lot of trial and error. And in that process, in that risk-taking, um, things evolve into something else. You get insight. Uh, but I think the thing that has been true, and I don't know why it's been true. <laughs> uh, it seemed to be something that I had to do. Uh, and that kind of dedication and commitment. I didn't look at it that way. It was just something I had to, uh, had to do. For me, I've, I feel really, really lucky uh, that I've had the opportunity to be a Warren Wilson for, for this time. Uh, because what I've found is um, Teaching has informed my art, and then the art has informed the teaching. So it's been a beautiful symbiotic relationship. Uh, and I also have to say, Nancy's encouragement has uh, <laughs> been very influential. Yeah.